Hi guys, in this video, I'm going to go over 25 coding differences between R and Python. I will divide this into two parts, general coding and data handling. Let's get to it. Part one, general coding. Number one, coding blocks or coding conventions. R uses curly braces and parentheses. For example, if you want to use a for loop or an if statement, you would need to cover the expression in parentheses and then open curly braces to run the code within. Python, on the other hand, uses indentation and columns. The same R code would look like this, where the indentation is very important as the different indentation levels refer to different execution levels. That is, a loop or an if statement only affect the indented code, not the non-indented code. Also, R operations can be spread on multiple rows by default, while in Python, the same code will throw an error, but we can adjust the code by either adding a slash or wrapping it in parentheses. Number two, creating a range of numbers. In R, we simply use colon between two numbers to create a series that ranges between the first number to the last number. In Python, we can use the range function. Note that Python range is lazy executed and must be transformed to a list in order to access the elements. Another option is to use numpy arrange method. This brings us to a major difference between Python and R, indexing. In R, indexing starts at one and ends with the last element in the sequence included. In Python, indexing starts at zero and ends without the last element. Number four, functions. In R, we declare functions like this, assigning a variable with the function command. In Python, we use the def command. Number five, default arguments or parameters in a function. In R, we can specify default arguments regardless of their order. That is, this code runs just fine. In Python, the equivalent code will throw an error. Default arguments must be after the non-default. This code will run fine now. Number six, strings concatenation. In R, we will use the paste or paste zero to concatenate strings and add variables to it. In Python, we will use the F strings. Number seven, Booleans. In R, we use capital T or capital F or specify the full word capitalized true or false. In Python, we use true or false with only the first letter capitalized. Number eight, empty values. In R, we use null, all capitalized, to specify an empty value. In Python, we use none instead. Number nine, dictionaries or hash tables. In R, we don't have a dict object per se, but many objects can be named. So we can use the list object, for example, to create a similar functionality. If the elements are all of the same type, we can even use the regular vector. In Python, we have a built-in dictionary object. For example, we could instantiate a dictionary like this and then access a certain element like this. Number 10, loading dependencies. In R, we use the library or the require commands. This automatically loads all the functions into the namespace. And if some methods were overwritten, we can still access the other elements using the double colons. In Python, we use the import command. By default, this allows us to access the commands using the model name and then dot and a function or a class. We can also alias the libraries, for example, import numpy as np. And we can also import specific functions from these models directly to our namespace. In addition, we can also import all of the functions from the library. Number 11, interacting with other source files. In R, we have to use the source command. In Python, we use the same import command as before. We're now moving to part two, handling data. But before that, if you like this video, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Okay, here we go. Number 12, vectors, matrices, and multidimensional arrays. In R, we can create a vector using the C command. C stands for combine. We can create a matrix passing to it a vector and specifying the rows numbers or the columns numbers or both of them. In Python, we need to use the NumPy library. 
we will import it and then create a vector like this and a matrix like this. As for multidimensional arrays, in R, we can create a multidimensional array of more than two dimensions using the array command. In Python, we can simply use the NumPy arrays. For example, we can create the same like this. We could also type in the multidimensional array manually, but that would be a bit tedious. Number 13, matrix multiplication. In R, we have to use the percent asterisk percent symbol, which is a bit cumbersome. In Python's NumPy, we can use the at symbol, which is a shorthand for NumPy matmul function. Number 14, matrix transpose. In R, in order to transpose a matrix, we wrap it with a T and then parentheses around the matrix. In Python, we use dot capital T on the matrix. Number 15, reshaping vectors to matrices. This is a subtle point. In R, creating matrices is done column-wise by default. If we wish to create a matrix by row, we have to specify it deliberately. In Python, it is done row-wise by default, and we have to specify deliberately if we want it to be column-wise. Number 16, broadcasting. Broadcasting refers to using arithmetic operations with arrays of different dimensions. A common example is adding a vector to a matrix. This is a type of silent errors that will not throw an error, but will not do what you expect if you're coming from R to Python or from Python to R. And I lost many hours debugging code because I forgot that R and Python are different in this regard. In R, the addition will be column-wise. If you want it to be row-wise, we have to do something like this, or alternatively using the sweep command. In Python, this addition will be done row-wise. Number 17, data frames. R has built-in data frames capabilities, though it's usually good practice to use the tidyverse coding system. For example, to use dplyr to perform manipulations on a data frame. To create a data frame, one could write the following code. To create a new variable and filter the rows based on some condition, we could do this. Python doesn't have built-in data frame capabilities, and the most popular data frame library is pandas. We'll import pandas and then do the same operation we did in R. Number 18, accessing a column in a data frame. In R, we will use the dollar symbol, which would be used also for lists and other named objects. In pandas, we will use the dot operator. In both R and pandas, we can also access a column by specifying the column name in brackets. Number 19, stacking operations or method chaining. In R, using dplyr, we will use the pipe command. In Python, we will use the dot instead. Number 20, filtering rows. In R, we could either use tedious vectorized Boolean expressions like this, or preferably using the dplyr filter command. In Python pandas, we would have to use this cumbersome code, or alternatively, a new way of doing this is to use the query command. Number 21, subsetting or slicing arrays. In R, this is done like so. But if you wish to take everything in one of the dimensions, in R, it is done like this, with a comma without specifying anything. But in Python, the same code will throw an error. In order for this to work in Python, you have to add a colon. And of course, using the colon in R will also throw an error. What about subsetting or slicing a data frame? In R, this is done in exactly the same way. And we can also change the data frame index to be some labels and then slice it in a similar way as done in pandas. In Python, pandas has two ways of indexing, either using the labels with the dot lock or using numerical indices using the dot i lock. Note that unlike the normal Python behavior, dot lock will also return the last element in the slice. 
Number 22, plotting. In R, we can plot using the base R, for example, using the plot command, but these plots are usually not very impressive. The current standard is to use ggplot, which is also a part of the tidyverse coding system. In ggplot, we usually pass a data frame containing the data and then specify the aesthetics we wish to use. That is, which variable in the data frame corresponds to which visual element, the x-axis, the y-axis, the color, etc. But we can also work without a data frame, like this. In Python, the standard way of plotting is using matplotlib. To generate a similar plot, we would write something like this. There are also other plotting libraries. In Python, Seaborn is quite popular, and Plotly is another powerful JavaScript-based library, which can be used both in Python and in R. Number 23, setting random seeds. Setting a random seed helps to reproduce results whenever a random number generator is used. In R, we use the set.seed command. In Python, we need to set the seed on the component that is making the generation. If we use the random module, we will set random.seed. If we use the numpy, we will set np.random.seed. Number 24, lengths, shapes, and dimensions. In R, we use the full word length command for vectors or lists, and we use the dim command for matrices and data frames. In Python, instead of length, we use len, that is the starting half of the word. And in NumPy, we would use dot shape for the shape of arrays and matrices. And in pandas, we will also use dot shape for data frames. Number 25, missing values. In R, they are set by NA or NAN. In Python, they can be set using the numpy.nan. Bonus number 26, exponentiation. In R, we can use both the caret symbol and the double asterisk symbols. In Python, we can only use the double asterisk symbols as the caret symbol does another thing. So these are my top coding differences between Python and R. What do you think? Did I miss something? Let me know in the comment sections below. Like always, I hope you enjoyed and see you in the next video.